Hi. Rene Lafour wanted to know if the bones of the face broke along reproducible fracture patterns. Um, he had a number of cadavers and he struck them in the mid face with um, different levels of force from different directions and then looked at the bones. And he did. He found or well, he gave three classes of fracture to the mid face. And while these don't account for all the fractures of the face, they are useful enough to still be used over a hundred years later. And we can use them to help us understand how the bones of the face are attached to the bones of the cranium and how they might become detached. <laughs> First thing to consider, I think, uh, well, the bones. So we, we have the bones of the face, which are the viscerocranium, and then we have the bones of the cranial cavity surrounding the brain, the neurocranium. And whilst these are all bones of the head, bones of the skull, um, they're in different places. They're, they're slightly different things. So the bones of the face very much give the shape of the face, and we're very good at recognizing other humans' faces. Um, and the bones of the face, if we look under here, we can see how the bones of the neurocranium attach to the bones of the viscerocranium. If I get a skull with lots of lovely colored bones, it's a lot easier to see. So we can see the bones of the viscerocranium. We can see the bones of the neurocranium. And as I tilt this up, look, look at this red bone. So the red bone here, this very central bone is the sphenoid bone. It's a single central bone. It is forming part of the cranial cavity. You can also see it in the posterior orbits, but down here we have these pterygoid plates. Can you see how the pterygoid plates are very much linking the neurocranium with the viscerocranium? All of the Lefort classes of fracture of the mid face include a fracture of these pterygoid plates. Uh, or the, the pterygoid wings, if you like. So pterygoid means wing-shaped. These are these wing-shaped extensions of the sphenoid bone. The other thing I think we can do is we can remove the mandible. We're not interested in the mandible today. And by taking the mandible out, you can maybe get a slightly better sense of how the bones of the face are separate to the neurocranium. Okay, a type one Lefort fracture. You can feel the alveolar ridge is the bit of bone your teeth is in. If you palpate around, the alveolar ridge is part of the maxilla and it runs around here. A type 1 Lefort fracture is through the alveolar ridge. It's, um, it's kind of at the base of the nose here, so it's going to go through the lateral wall of the nose. It's a fracture of the maxilla. It's also a fracture of the pterygoid plates. Remember that inside the maxilla, this isn't a solid chunk of bone, you have a maxillary sinus on either side, so that's essentially a weakness. So imagine the fracture going through the walls of the maxillary sinus, so you have a complete fracture line across here. It's a horizontal fracture plane. Can you see what this would mean for the upper teeth? The upper teeth are now no longer connected to anything else. They can move, they can float around. You might find that the, you have malocclusion, the, the teeth don't meet as they did before, and the upper teeth, they move around a little bit. That's your type 1 Lefort fracture. A type 2 Lefort fracture, imagine a fracture line running like this. We're running from the posterior alveolar ridge through the walls of the maxillary sinus, through the inferior orbit, through the nasal bones, maybe up to the nasofrontal suture up here. So this is a, a diagonal fracture line. And in fact, if this happens on both sides, and we've got to consider this in three dimensions, we have a pyramidal shape. We have a fracture line here, we have a fracture line here, and we have a fracture line through the pterygoid plates again, so we have a base here. We have now a pyramid, a free floating pyramid of facial bones that are not attached to the neurocranium. So again, there may be malocclusion of the teeth because the teeth can move around. Um, there will probably be bleeding from the nose. 
Um, we, the inferior margin of the orbit has been fractured, so expect to see some swelling of the orbit, around the orbit, uh, bruising around the orbit. Um, now we're really getting up to the, well, we're getting up to the cranial cavity. So there could be a fracture that includes the bones of the neurocranium, the cranial cavity. So we could also have cerebrospinal fluid leaking from the cranial cavity and constantly dripping from the nose, a clear fluid dripping from the nose. And the face might look different. There might be an increased separation of the eyes. Um, so that's a type two Lefort fracture. We've formed a pyramid of bone that is now separated from the other bones of the, of the head. Um, a type three Lefort fracture is higher again. It's another transverse fracture or horizontal fracture. And we're going from, again, that nasofrontal suture across the walls of the orbit and across the zygomatic bone as well, as well as the pterygoid plates. So now this whole section of face is mobile, is separated from the neurocranium. Potentially now the whole mid face has dislocated from the neurocranium, which can cause a change in the shape of the face, a lengthening, a flattening of the face, very similar to a type two Lefort fracture, again, malocclusion of the teeth, the nose can move as well, um, swelling around the eyes, bruising around the eyes, potentially CSF leakage from the cranial cavity, bleeding from the nose, all of these things. Uh, now the ear might also be um, affected. There might be um, fluids leaking from the ear. There might be bruising around the mastoid process here. Um, but that's a type three Lefort fracture, so much more severe. So as we've gone from type one to type two to type three, the fracture is more severe. More of the mid face is potentially mobile. So Lefort fractures are fractures of the mid face. A type one fracture sees a fractured maxilla and fractured pterygoid plates, but the orbit is intact and the zygomatic arch is intact. A type two Lefort fracture sees um, a fracture running across the maxilla, across the orbit, the pterygoid plates are fractured, but the zygomatic arch is intact. A type three Lefort fracture sees a fracture of the orbit and the zygomatic arch and the pterygoid plates and the bones of the, the, bones of the face are able to move separately from the bones of the neurocranium. The pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone are fractured in all three classes. And it's the sphenoid bone that is the central bone that's part of the neurocranium and is also attached to the bones of the viscerocranium. That's linking the bones of the face to the bones of the, the cranial cavity. So that's a really important concept and helps with that 3D understanding of how these bones are arranged. So the Lefort classifications of mid-face fractures um, are essentially describing almost fault lines or lines of weakness along which fractures might form. As I mentioned, like the maxillary sinus in here, we can't see it, but that means that fractures are gonna progress in a certain way. And we can see a number of the sutures here. Um, in actuality, um, so these are caused by blows to the face at different levels, at different angles and different levels of force will give these different uh, classifications of Lefort fracture. But in fact, it might, the, the fracture might only be on one side or it might be on one side and there'd be a different fracture on the other side. I think about 24% of fractures to the mid face align directly with those three classifications, but they really help understand um, what's going on here. Um, a CT scan, will determine what the fracture actually is and also determine the best course of surgical action to repair the face. But more importantly than all of that anatomically is the concept that these bones of the mid face are attached to the, the cranium here at those pterygoid plates and it's possible with a blow to the face to separate the bones of the visceral cranium in different ways from the cranial cavity and for the bones of the face to then be able to move around, to be free floating. So to notice that 
malocclusion, that the teeth don't join up as they should. To see blood from the nose, maybe the nose moves around, the swelling of the eyes, the bruising around the eye. To recognize all of those features that we've talked about and understand how this group of bones can be separated from this group of bones, and that's what's going on in the patient, and that's what needs to be fixed. Um, facial fracture. I hope it never to happen to me. It sounds horrific. Um, okay, see you next time.